The National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, has called for a reappraisal of the war against human trafficking worldwide. The Director General of NAPTIP, Julie Okadonli, said this during a webinar organized by the agency to commemorate the 2020 Day for the Fight Against Human Trafficking with the theme, Human Trafficking and COVID-19 Pandemic, The Challenges Ahead. Okadonli says despite the challenges posed by the pandemic, stock taking is necessary to allow stakeholders to determine a course for action. I heartily salute the United Nations for choosing this theme, which is a huge morale booster to frontline soldiers in the fight against human trafficking. It is also a challenge for us to do a stock taking of our efforts, evaluate our strengths and challenges, and revamp to ensure greater successes in the coming years. In Nigeria, we have modified this theme in order to draw attention to the adverse effects of COVID-19 pandemic on the efforts of frontline officers and the victims of human trafficking. We're now joined by Angela Agbaehai, Head Intelligence and International Cooperation Unit, NAPTIP. Thank you very much for joining us. Can you Thank hear you us? very much for having me. Good morning, sir. You're welcome. Today, human trafficking Thank is the much, second... Yes. Is the second largest and fastest growing criminal enterprise in the world. From your interventions, how would you rate its prevalence in Nigeria? Yes, this prevalence in Nigeria is very high. And first of all, before I answer your question, I want to thank you for having me and to also thank my Director General, Dame Julie Okadomni, who has asked me to represent her on this occasion. The Human trafficking prevalence in Nigeria is quite high because it is a very low risk business and the profit is very, very high. And also because Nigeria is a, as a state, a country of origin, a country of transit and a country of destination. Meaning that Nigeria, we ex, uh, people are being sent, victims are being sent outside the country for human trafficking. The country is also a transit country whereby people pass through Nigeria to their destination country. And again, victims are also being brought into the country because Nigeria is their end destination. So the prevalence is very high and the poverty rate, ignorance, unemployment, there's so many factors that are also leading to this. So I'm going to say yes, it is quite high in Nigeria. What areas would you say you have continued to channel all your energy in your rescue mission of trafficked persons? Okay, um, the agency has channeled its uh, resources, manpower, into five strategic areas known as the five Ps. We have a policy in place that's been put together to checkmate this ill of human trafficking. We also have the prevention method where we do a lot of advocacy and enlightenment campaigns, especially at the grassroots to tell people about human trafficking because the present DG of the agency, Dame Julioka Donley, seriously believes that prevention is better than cure. So we've carried out a lot of advocacy. Also, we have also uh, put a P in place, which is the prosecution, where stiver penalties have been meted out to offenders ranging from death and um, life imprisonment and pain of very high stiff penalties, like huge fine. We also have the protection um, method where we take care of the victims. We rehabilitate them, we cancel them because a lot of them come back traumatized. So we do that also. And the last P is the partnership, which we consider to be very important. The menace of human trafficking cannot be fought by one agency alone. So we rely on our international partners and our, our national partners to assist us. We work together, we collaborate, we, we form a, a very tight synergy among ourselves right. to fight this crime so that we can carry out joint um, investigation, joint operations, and of course, sharing of information. Good, good thing you spoke about this. trauma. is one of the things that you mentioned, uh, the, the trauma that these victims face. What are the challenges you face reintegrating these traffic persons and these victims um, who have been rescued? One of the great challenges we face when we repatriate these girls 
and want to reintegrate them back to their family is the lack of actionable contact information. Most of these girls are not well schooled. They are not well read. So they don't even know where they are coming from. They don't even know who has trafficked them. They hardly can even remember where they are coming from. Some is because they've been traumatized. But we do a lot of counseling. We give them time. We do not rush them so that they can get themselves together and tell us exactly where their addresses are. And we try as an agency to reintegrate them. So that has been one of the huge challenges. And of course, funding, you know, to, re to reintegrate anybody, whether within the country or outside, um, you need the um, funds to do that. So funding has also been a challenge. Then there's another challenge I would like to mention here. It is not very popular to Nigerians, but it's also a huge problem we've been facing in trying to reintegrate these um, victims is the kafala system. The kafala system is whereby a victim has been sold to an employer and the employer seems now tells you, I own you. They seem to own this victim and everything about them rests in the hands of the employer. So those are some of the areas we find challenging, but we are doing our bit as an agency. All right, we'd like to say a big thank you for the conversation and of course um, for the work that you do also um, at NAPTIP, um, Angela Agbayek. I thank you so much for speaking with us. We hope to of course continue this conversation sometime in the future.